So if we think about that, it raises the opportunity to be viewed, but it also thinks about engagement. So like any good rock concert, any ACDC fans? Just out of curiosity? Okay. A little shy, but that's all right. Um, ACDC, they know how to throw a really good rock concert. You'll walk out of there sweating. Well, guess what? They follow the three eyes of engagement that Forrester Research came up with. Okay, they probably knew this before they, Forrester came out with it. But interaction, intimacy, influence, really thinking about how to create good, engaging content. And what we know is that when you utilize visuals, when you utilize multimedia content, not only do you get more views, but on average about 35% better overall engagement with your content. People spend more time looking at your content, playing your content, maybe downloading it, even sharing your content. So if we think about giving people more opportunities to view and then engage with our content, well, I want to show you a little case study of this at work. So Nissan at the Geneva uh, Auto Show, now I know this is Sweden, not Switzerland, but this was the closest example I could bring up. Um, but Geneva Auto Show earlier this year, Nissan came out with their new concept electric car. They did a full-on multimedia news release, a lot of interesting content, and in fact it got pay picked up by Yahoo and it was right on their front page. And in fact, this, vi this image right here was actually utilized in that multimedia news release that they made very easy to access, view, and use. But it didn't stop just there. They had a whole section in their auto block and all of those images came directly for that multimedia news release and then it starts to get shared within multimedia. But then it continues on. Smart Planet, very specific focused blog. Again, utilizing all the very easy to access, view, and use content and it continues to get shared on. It gets picked up more by All Cars Electric with all the different elements. But then the New York Times picks it up. And the New York Times in their article actually links directly to the multimedia news release. USA Today grabs on, grabs content. Mashable, Crunch Gear. It goes to Tectudo in Brazil, the Japanese auto blog, The Sun in London. In fact, Engadget, one of the top technology blogs, picks up on it, takes the content we made available, and then actually embeds the release as part of the story. Now, I know what all of you are thinking. Where can I get this car? No. Um, I know you're all thinking, well, wait a minute. I'm sorry, I don't have a sexy car like that all the time to tell my story. But guess what? It can work for a business-to-business -business company as well. SAP is not a sexy company. So, any SAP people here? No? Good. All right. But they're not a sexy company. I think people at SAP would tell you that as well. But they're making software and software integration packages, but they can make their content a little more interesting. And it starts to get picked up and shared around, and it's about getting that message out there and giving that message the best opportunity to reach multiple audiences and to have somebody else tell our story for us. If we make it easier for somebody to tell the story for us, they more likely will. So, visibility plus engagement equals that increased sharing of content, but when we look at rarely shared versus frequently shared, well, rarely shared is free trials, product info, product documentation. I'm sure some of you have had to write news releases about those things. Real exciting stuff to write, isn't it? But frequently shared, new data, Funny, okay, funny does work. Um, but infographics, survey results, three out of those have to deal with data. The types of content that people like to share is good data nuggets. Good little pieces of information that make them easy for people to share. So we see that information, now we gotta take that content and make it directional. Now, some of you are saying, okay, I look at this, I'm doing some of this. The big problem that I see is companies and organizations are setting out their outposts outside of their own site and trying to direct content back to our site. But the big mistake that's made is while they do that, they very rarely actually connect all the dots around the circle. And that's where the real power comes in. So you write your news release, send it out on PR Newswire. Now if you're writing your release well, and you've got good links in there, good terms, etc. It links right back to the pages that you're trying to direct people to go to. 
So what's the next logical thing that people are going to do? Well, today, the next logical thing that most people do is they go to Facebook or Twitter. And they go to Facebook or Twitter, and they go and they link back into the news release. Or, excuse me, they link back into the company corporate page. But is that the right thing to do? So if we think about this a little bit differently, PR Newswire generally, in about 80 to 85 percent of the cases, we have a stronger page rank than our clients do. We have a stronger trust rank because we're graded as editorial content. So what happens is, is that outside of the marketing world, people don't know who PR Newswire is and they think, oh, well, it's a news service. This is news. This is information. It also, for you, then acts as third-party validation. So you issue that news release out on PR Newswire, it leads in. Now you go to your Facebook or your Twitter and you link back to that news release that links back in. Now you've got high page rank to high page rank, third party validation, linking back into the place that you want them to go. Now you go and you might write a blog post and you take that blog post and now you link in that blog post maybe to your news release but now you put your Twitter and your Facebook and you link up to your blog post. Maybe you've included a video on YouTube and you've included that in your news release and you start linking all of this content not just to where you're trying to drive people to but back to each other creating very good linking strategies. And that content doesn't just have to be news releases. But the beauty here is, is if we're trying to communicate on a very regular basis, if you're writing that really long press release that we know doesn't work anymore, you break that content up and you schedule it. And now you've got that one news release that used to be one big, long, fat news release now becomes three news releases. And that fuels what you're going to talk about for the next three weeks. Because you put your news release out on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, you write a blog post about that news release. On Thursday or Friday, maybe you release a little bit of video that you place on your YouTube channel, your Facebook page, your blog post, your tweet, and maybe you do another release and then you continue that on where you start the conversation next week into what's the conversation you want to have this week. Because you've taken that big long press release about three different things and now broken it up into very singular items to have conversations about and drive that ongoing conversation. So it works for the B2C world, but it also works in the business to business world through your blogs, vlogs, white paper, case studies, research, etc. Driving all of that content back to where you want someone to go. It's like leaving breadcrumbs. You know, you want to leave a trail of breadcrumbs to help people find your content. Everybody know the story of Hansel and Gretel, right? They love that trail of candy. I mean, but this has a happy ending. So, um, you know, but you want to leave that way for people to find your content. So, a couple of takeaways I want to leave you with. First, leave that trail of breadcrumbs. I can't say it enough. Connect your content. Don't be afraid to try something new. You're going to make mistakes. That's okay. My mother taught me growing up the reason why we make mistakes in life is so we can learn from them. But the best way to learn from them is learn from other people's mistakes. Hence the difference between me and my older sister. But <laughs> I learned from her mistakes. I didn't get in trouble as much. So, but if you're going to conferences, you're going to marketing conferences, etc., the best sessions to go to are those sessions that are labeled, I screwed up, learn from me. We want to fail in this world because without failure, you can never have success. But if you're going to fail, fail fast and move on. So don't be afraid to fail. Actually accept that you are going to fail, but be ready to move on and be ready to learn from your mistakes so that you can move on quickly. Make your content as easy to access, view, and use as possible. And finally, as a good hockey player once said, skate to where the puck, don't skate to where the puck is, but skate to where it's going to be. Today, with our content, we want to give the best opportunity for our content to be viewed and, and engaged with. Not just today, but tomorrow. So we can't just continue to do the methods that we know have worked in the past because our audiences are shifting and they're changing. So we need to take our content and make sure that they can engage where our audiences and our opportunities are going to be tomorrow. So the future is yours. Thank you.
Thank you, Michael. You've got me so confused. I don't know what is false or what is true. So for forgetting all the things you know, I still don't know if I should let you go.